Welcome to Don Alphen on Fishing. Today we're at Lake Powell. We've been here two days actually. We're just getting ready to go home, but I want to introduce the, the video that, we, that we're shooting. And, and trust me on this, this isn't going to be the best video of showing hook sets and showing fish landing because we were doing some other things. But what we are going to talk about today is how to locate fish on a finder. I've had so many requests for this kind of a video. So in this short video, that's what we're going to do. And now this is Brent Daybell, my good friend. and. And uh, we've just caught, how many fish have we caught today? Oh, we've probably caught 30. 30 at least. And, uh, and we, uh, we caught 10 yesterday, so we tripled what we did yesterday. And, and so sit back and relax and enjoy uh, this little episode. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Well, since this is a video about fish finders, and, and it's hard for me to, to show this just because of the fact that we do not have, I do not have my GoPro here with me had some technical issues and so and so I'm filming with uh, my iPhone so just be aware of that um, what I want to show you as we're looking at this is that right here those may or may not be little small schools of shad most likely not sometimes when you have bubbles coming up in a in a uh, you know just any kind of an area where the water's going down or even going up bubbles have a tendency to look like they're kind of 45 angle vertical lines. However, if you look to the right of the screen right here, right there, that line right there is a striper and there's some more stripers right below it, but notice the little specks right here. Those specks are all shad or bait fish. They could be small bluegill, but I'm assuming they're shad, okay? Now, as we continue, notice the, the depth over here, 78 feet. 47 degree water temperature, 322 in the afternoon, okay? Now as you look at this, the reason that I that this looks like it could be bait fish is notice they came up and leveled off. If it were bubbles, they'd all come all the way up to the, to the surface. So the assumption here is that we're over a top of, of, of a bunch of shad and there's some stripers mixed down. Now I'm gonna shut off the video, I'm gonna grab a rod and we'll video it again and I'll show you what my bait looks like, my lure, which is just a spoon going down to fish to see if those, uh, if these fish are, are actually active. Okay, we're over, I, I've had uh, my buddy Brent grab my iPhone. So all we're doing is we're, is we're literally over in that same school of fish that I was just talking to you about and I have now dropped a line down. Now if you can see right here that's my line coming down but I pulled it back up now I'm gonna drop it down again. Okay that's my line again going all the way down to the bottom. Okay now now we've come into 36 feet of water because we were in like 78 feet now we're in 36 feet so I'm going to bring my lure up and hopefully get you get it get it uh, so that you can see what happens. There it is. There's that lure coming up. So if you can see this right here, that's my lure. Okay. And so and so as I get it into a position that I want to jig. Um, and by the way, we're really out out of our fish, but that doesn't matter because all I'm trying to do is show show you how this works. So if I get my lure coming up and I want to jig it up and down, if you look real closely, you'll see that that's my lure. So as I, as I jig it, you can actually see my lure jigging up and down. It's not showing it really well right this second just because of the nature of where I'm, where I'm holding my, my rod. You always, in order to see your lure, you want to be fairly close to where you. Oh, there's a fish! Just right there. I didn't. I didn't even have a clue that it was. That it was. Oh, that just came off. I'm not trying to catch a fish. I just happened to hook that one. I just wanted to to let you know that when you drop your lure very very close to a uh, to your transducer on the front of your boat or front of your trolling motor, then it'll allow you generally to see that lure go down to the bottom or towards the bottom and that's all I was trying to point out now I'm a little bit close to a wall here so 
we're going to go ahead and turn the video off again and we'll turn it back on here in just a second. Now we've just moved around the corner here so we've probably only gone about 30 yards but I want you to see all these are stripers that's what stripers look like when they're when they're actually active. If they're not active they won't look like that they'll look like straight lines that are stacked up like that but these particular fish happen to be active. I do not know if they'll bite at this juncture but I'm just trying to let you know that that that's what that's what stripers look like when they're when they're uh, swimming and uh, not just herded up on the bottom a lot of times stripers will look like this except those are just shad but you'll they'll be these kind of oh there I had a hit another another hit down there just I was not really trying like I said not really trying to catch a fish but but uh, but he came so there he is right there. I know it's it's tough to to see and we're not trying to film this particular thing. Just I just happened to lose my my uh, guess that was a good one to have. But as you'll see, that's what those stripers look like. Now, interesting thing, this striper that I just caught just threw up a crawdad. So he's not necessarily eating only shad he's eating crawdads too so I'm just gonna kind of show you that fish there but those are the stripers now get back onto that there are the stripers right there now this could be shad definitely minnows could be stripers too but most likely those are just shad and those are the stripers right above them. I'm going to point out where my my uh, lure is when it comes down through the column. There it is right there. If you can see that black line coming all the way down. See now I'm right in the middle of some fish so I can stop right there because there was a fish that looked like it was kind of active right there. So I just stopped my lure. Now if I want to go all the way to the bottom once again, all I do is just continue to drop, and there it is, dropping right down to those other fish. So all those fish are there. Oh, I just missed one. So that, those other fish are all just right there. And uh, all we're waiting for is to have one of them get excited enough to come up and grab that spoon. I missed two fish on the way down on that one. So, so we'll just uh, let it go all the way to the bottom, and then I'll start working it back up as soon as it hits the bottom which we're in 54 feet, so I'll let it go all the way down. Notice it's a slack line, so I know that it's the bottom. Now I'm just gonna pull it a little tiny bit off the bottom and then gradually just bring it up through the fish that I'm seeing on the screen. Now a lot of the school is moved. We have our tolling motor on spot locks. So we're staying right on one specific location, GPS location, and uh, and all I'm doing is just moving the spoon just a little bit to make it look as if a bait fish is trying to get away. And, uh, and that's really it. Um, take a look at this finder. I've got a fish right down there, two or three of them. And uh, I'm gonna go down, just drop down for him. There, 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 I've got him, I've got him. I have no idea what it is. Look where it hit right there. Just keep looking, that's where it hit. Oh, it came off. Nope, it's got, it come up. Hey, it's a small mouth bass. Look at that, a smallie came up in uh, 45 degree water and actually hit that, hit that uh, spoon. Isn't that great? Nice 14 incher. Uh, that's, the, that's the first uh, smallie of the year for me. So that's kind of an exciting thing on the 31st of January. That's a good looking fish. Great fish. Just to change gears a little bit, we decided to put on some Lucky Craft Stacy's and uh, caught, a, caught a quick 15 or, or so uh, stripers and so I'd like to have, uh, have you see how Brent is throwing his Stacy and what he's doing, where he is in relationship to the shore and now we're in about uh, 15 feet of water right here coming to the very very back of a cove and um, it's kind of amazing sometimes sometimes these stripers will chase shad into the into the back and uh, and they'll just stay on them until they either the school moves or 
they eat all of them and then a lot of the stripers will still hang around and um, and so I think that that's the kind of the striper we're actually fishing. I'm going to have uh, Brent th start throwing in front of the boat so that I can get get him uh, his retrieves in in f on film so you can see exactly what he's doing. He's taking two or three quick jerks down to get the Stacy down probably as deep as it's going to go. And then he just tries to make the retrieve as erratic as possible. It's amazing. It's the same kind of retrieve we use for uh, jerk baits on strawberry for the cutthroat. Stacy is a jerk bait. It just has a larger bill, so it goes deeper. So this bait's getting down between oh, 10 and 12 feet. Hey, thanks for watching today. Apologize for not having the boat here to show you the fish that we caught, but um, uh, my buddy Brent had to run over and get it decontaminated so that we could leave Lake Powell with a good conscience. So uh, we had a great day. Um, I've started to clean already, so we had 32 fish. I've already cleaned a few, but um, about half of them came on a small spoon. This is about a half ounce spoon. This happens to be made by P-Line. It's not necessarily anything special. It's uh, silver, a little bit pearl looking. That's what we caught our fish that we spooned with um, on. And then about halfway through the day, Brent decided, since we were back in the back of a cove, Brent decided to go ahead and, and throw, he threw a Stacy, which is very similar to this. This has a little blade underneath it, but it's about the same size, a little bit longer bill in front. And he started throwing that in the back and the stripers really liked that. So we switched gears midstream and every once in a while we'd get to the back of a cove, we'd take out our jerk baits and we really uh, matched what we did with the spoons on the jerk baits in the last part of the day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, today's presentation, especially looking at the finder, fish finder, and seeing what fish are, are there. Uh, watch our baits go down, um, being able to tell the bottom from bait fish, the bait fish from stripers or, or any other fish that we're after. So I uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like us and uh, please comment and let us know what other videos you'd like uh, for us to produce. These are for you to, to help you become a better angler. Thanks for watching.